So thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I would like to take a second and uh, thank um, you know Anna, Maria Rosaria, and Michael for, for putting together a great event. And um, as well to, to, to thank Sasha Tepliaev and uh, Luke Rogers for generously including me and my graduate students in the US-based effort for, 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 for this meeting. So um, as Sasha mentioned, I'm going to speak on the radon Kahneman problem in uniformly rectifiable domains. And um, you know, to get started, you know, this, is, this is, has to do with the issue of computing or estimating essential norm or uh, the Fredholm radius of singular integral operators of double layer potential type associated with a variety of, ellipti of, of elliptic partial differential equations on um, uh, function spaces naturally intervening uh, uh, in the formulation of the problem. And uh, one of the main goals that I would like to, ha you know, to, to, to place uh, in this uh, uh, lecture is on monitoring the interplay between the analysis and the geometry. Uh, particularly how the geometrical qualities of the domain translate in analytical properties of the singular integral uh, operators associated with the PDE. In particular, you know, given the thematic of, of, of the one-week effort here, I'm going to try to emphasize the fractal-like characteristics that, that, that influence this type of analysis. Um, so uh, to get started, let me start, you know, with setting up, um, you know, the general um, uh, the general setting, you know, so we're going we're, we're to have here an open uh, bounded uh, uh, reasonable domain and then I'm, what, what I mean by reasonable is going to gradually change throughout this talk. And uh, fix an integrability index P between 1 and infinity. And let's look at the Dirichlet problem for the Laplacian uh, in the domain omega with uh, data in the Lobeck space of P integrable functions on the topological boundary of the domain. Uh, with respect to the surface measure. And this has three um, um, you know, parts. It has the PDE condition, we're seeking you know, harmonic functions in the domain omega. It has a boundary condition. U is going to be non-tangentially restricted to the topological boundary, and this is going to be equal to the given data F, which is assumed to be in LP. And uh, this is typically accompanied by, by a size condition, you know, we're, we're going to be requiring that the non-tangential maximal operator of the solution U is, um, you know, LP integrable on the, bound, on the topological boundary with respect to the surface measure. To, to set things up, you know, here for, for omega, you know, a parameter fixed, you know, gamma of x, where x is a point on the topological boundary, is going to consist of all those points y in the domain omega, such that the distance between x and y is controlled by 1 plus omega, uh, the distance between y and the topological boundary. This is called the non-tangential region generated by the point x. And, you know, you can think of it as, you know, consisting um, uh, consisting of points y in the domain omega such that they cannot be close to the boundary without being close to the point x that generated them. In the case when the domain is an upper half space and x is a point on the boundary, gamma of x is, you know, is just a straight upright cone with the aperture strictly determined by the value of the parameter omega with vertex at the point x. All right. For a function u originally defined at the domain omega, the non-tangential maximal operator u evaluated at the point x on the topological boundary consists of taking supremum of, of, of um, um, the modulus of u over the non-tangential region generated by the point x. And the non-tangential trace at the boundary at the point x is the limit as y approaches x, but y is restricted to the non-tangential region of u of y whenever this is meaningful. So I just explained, you know, all the, all, all the you know, um, um, notions entering the formulation of the boundary value problem with the, with, with the LP data. And um, um, we've seen already in some of the talks, you know, a natural singular integral operator to, to, to look at in this context is the double layer potential. So we're looking here at the double layer potential. I decorated this with the delta here standing for the Laplacian because I'm going to talk about double layer potentials associated with other, other second order elliptic operators. And uh, this has the form um, um, expressed here. We're integrating over the topological boundary with respect to the surface measure, the inner product between the chord y minus x and the unit normal vector 
uh, nu evaluated at the point y over absolute value of x minus y to the power n. n is the, uh, the dimension of the Euclidean sp space in which omega lies. And um, um, uh, you know, up to a you know um, factor that um, um, is a dimensional factor. So so um, so uh, what it's important here is that you know this is a mechanism of generating a lot of harmonic functions. You know, so here g, the function g, the density is, is just a function defined on the domain omega on which you're imposing only just conditions, so, so, so that the, you know this is an integral that the, the quantity we're integrating you know uh, is, is in fact integrable. Um, so um, this is a mechanism to generate a lot of harmonic functions. It turns out that the Laplacian of, of, of the double layer of G is equal to zero in the domain omega because, the, be, be, because there is harmonicity in the integral kernel of the double layer. You know, the integral kernel of the double layer turns out to be nothing else but the normal derivative of the fundamental solution of the Laplacian um, 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 evaluated, you know, um, at x minus y, all right? So uh, no matter what g is, the double layer of g is a harmonic function. Thinking about the boundary value problem that we'd like to solve, you know, we're worrying now about the boundary condition and about the size condition because the, the PDE is satisfied, no matter what g is. Um, the very powerful uh, machinery of Calderon Zygmunt, you know, enters now and guarantees that the non-tangential maximal function of the double layer potential of G is always in LP for as long as the function G is LP integrable on the, on, on the topological boundary for any P strictly between one and infinity. So the size condition is also satisfied, no matter what G is. So we have a lot of freedom, you know, up to now, but there remains, of course, the issue of the boundary condition. So, so, so in order to understand, you know, the boundary behavior of the double layer potential operator, we're gonna have to, you know, deal with the jump formulas. So for each G in LP and P between one and infinity, the, form, the following jump formula holds. If we restricted the double layer potential of G non-tangentially to the boundary, we obtain one half identity. So I here stands for the identity operator plus K delta applied to G, sigma almost everywhere on the topological boundary, where K delta is the boundary to boundary version of, 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 of the double layer potential operator. So here the operator D delta takes the function G that lies on the boundary into a harmonic function inside the domain. What the operator K delta does, it takes functions on the boundary, topological boundary of the domain omega, onto you know, functions which are on the boundary of, of, the, of, of, of the domain omega. So look here at the form of G of, of the operator K delta, you know, the boundary to boundary version of the double layer, looks very much like the, like, like the, the form above, with the fundamental difference though that the point X now is on the topological boundary. So the integral kernel becomes a singular one and the integral has to be understood in the principal value sense. Well, I just ask what you're assuming about the smoothness of the boundary at this point. I just said reasonable, so I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna, well, as I said, you know, so, so I just, uh, but I'm gonna walk you through, uh, you know, an increasingly, you know, complicated, you know, uh, notion of what reasonable is gonna mean, okay? So for the minute, I'm not, I'm not I'm, you know, I just wanna set the objects, you know, that, that are gonna, you know, be important in the study. So the boundary condition is satisfied. So, so now, I'm sorry, I think that I went the other way. You know, so now, you know, um, if we, with the boundary, with the jump formula in place, you know, it becomes important that G is selected in such a way that the boundary trace of the double layer, which is this expression in the left-hand side, matches the Dirichlet data, F. So um, this is, a, you know, the, the typical essence. So, so this is the essence of the layer potential method in, in which we reduce the, the issue of solving the elliptic boundary value problem to, to, to solving a boundary integral equation. So we need to solve one half identity plus k delta of g equals f. f is the given data and we would like to find g. You know, so we need to, you know, ideally invert one half identity plus k on LP. Uh, in this situation or, or on other function spaces depending on the context that you're working in. 
Um, it's also, you know, in, in connection with the issue of inverting one half identity plus k, it's, it's, it's useful to obtain um, information or the spectral radius or the Fredholm radius of this operator on, on acting on LP and obtain estimates on the norm and the essential norm of, 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 of this operator. So now, you know, let me, you know, just remind a few concepts here. Um, in fact, you know, uh, I'm going to talk about the essential norm, Fredholm radius. These are concepts introduced by by Radon um, in connection with studying an elliptic boundary value problem, in, in connection with studying the Dirichlet problem for the Laplacian, okay, in, in so-called Radon domains in two dimensions. So this goes back to maybe 1919, you know, around that time. Um, so uh, if X and Y are quasi-norm spaces, if we have a linear and bounded operator from X into Y, the quantity uh, that we're looking here, or we're, we're, we're taking the distance between the operator T and the space of compact operators acting between X and Y, is referred to as the essential norm, norm of T. Then the essential norm of T is the infimum of the norm you know, operator norm differences between T and K as K ranges over the set of compact operators. The essential norm is smaller than the norm of the operator T. And if X and Y happens to be quasi Banach, then in fact the essential norm is zero if and only if the operator is a compact operator. All right? So, um, you know, now let's assume that we're dealing with a quasi Banach space and T is an operator from the quasi Banach space into itself. Then we're going to, you know, introduce the spectral radius and the Fredholm radius. We're looking here at the spectral radius. Is, is, is the radius of the disk center the, the origin of the smallest disk center the, uh, the origin, which contains the spectrum of the operator, okay? So, um, and the Fredholm radius, in a, in a similar way, you know, is the, the, the uh, radius, the smallest radius in such a way um, the, the disk center that the origin and with, with that radius contains the essential spectrum of the operator. Okay. So um, um, the essential spectral radius is smaller than the spectral radius, which is smaller than the norm of the operator, and the essential spectral radius is zero whenever the operator is compact. So with this, you know, kind of functional analysis, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, like, you know, concepts in place, the numerical treatment of the integral equation one half identity plus k delta of g equals f is facilitated by having the knowledge that the spectral radius of this operator on LP is less than a half. In fact, it, you know, this, this, this type of inequality plays an important role in uh, so-called collocation methods for, 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 um, uh, for solving this type of boundary integral equation. And even in the situation of the Laplacian, and even in the situation of Lipschitz domains, all right, you know, I'm talking about, the, uh, you know, what nice for the moment means, you know, this is still an open question. You know, uh, the, the, the conjecture is called the spectral radius conjecture is that there exists epsilon, which depends on the geometric characteristics of the domain in such, in such a way that the spectral radius is less than a half for any p between two minus epsilon and plus infinity. Okay. The significance is that if the spectral radius is less than a half, then, you know, G is going to be one half identity plus K inverse applied to the Dirichlet data F. And when the spectral radius is less than a half, the inverse can be expressed as a convergent Neumann series. And um, ultimately allowing you to obtain the, you know, an explicit solution um, uh, of, the, of the elliptic PDE in terms of a convergent Neumann series that I have described here below. All right, so, um, you know, um, this goes back, you know, to, to, to the work of uh, Newman, Carleman, and Radon. In fact, Radon have shown, has shown in 1919 that if, if, if the domain, if we have a domain in, in, in the plane um, that is um, the, such that this topological boundary is a planar curve of bounded rotation without cusps, then um, the essential, the Fredholm radius, the essential uh, spectral radius of the operator K delta when acting on the space of continuous functions is less than a half. This is a remarkable property because it, 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 it um, it illustrates, you know, connections between the geometry of the domain and the analytical properties of the function. In fact, he was able to describe, the, like, like find a formula for it. 
which, which, which concretely shows how the singularity of the boundary, you know, affect, you know, how uh, far away the, the, the operator is from the space of compact operators. So um, uh, my next slides have a lot of other names. You know, a lot has happened. I'm not going to go through, 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 through reviewing this in, a, in a such a short talk. Um, but I, um, I would like to, uh, to also mention here, you know, uh, Carleman, uh, Carleman result. Three years prior to, 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 uh, um, to Radon, uh, in his PhD thesis at Uppsala University under Holmgren, he had you know, some sort of weighted versions of Radon's result, where the weights had to do with the distance from the point that you're at to the singular points on the, on, 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 on the boundary. All right, so, so um, uh, the, you know, Radon and Carleman have been you know, some of the pioneers you know, looking at this type of issues. So uh, since then, a lot has happened, you know, so like we, we have a pretty good understanding, you know, Mazia and collaborators, Shelepov, Lemel, Kellogg, you know, a lot of, you know, he, a lot of things have been clarified about um, 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 uh, this type of questions in, in piecewise domains in the plane, sometimes if the domain is smooth, much more is known, um, and, and so forth and uh, so on and so forth. Um, efforts have been done to, 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 to try to understand these issues in the class of Lipschitz domains, even though, as I said, you know, the spectral radius conjecture for the Laplacian still remains an open question. All right, and uh, people have looked at these issues in the context of other second order elliptic PDs. All right, so I'm gonna now show a bunch of pictures, you know. So we're looking here at the spectrum of the Laplacian, the boundary to boundary double layer, um, uh, 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 harmonic double layer, on an infinite sector of angle pi over two. So I have an infinite sector of pi over five. And we're looking at the spectrum of this operator on the space L2. The spectrum consists just of this curve. So if a point is not on the curve, then you know, a point Z is not on the curve, then the operator Z identity minus K is invertible on L2. Invertibility fails only when the point is on the curve. So this is like a bold type shape curve. Note that, you know, the point a half is over here, does not belong to the curve, so then you have the ability to invert, okay? In particular, the spectral radius of this operator is less than a half, you know, having, you know, like here, the spectral radius conjecture seems to be, you know, uh, 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 hold in, in, in this setting. So um, um, now I'm putting here five spectra, okay? okay you know, I'm looking at pi over five, two pi over five, four pi over five, and in fact, even though I, you know, five pi over five as well. So the, the philosophy is the, the, the Laplacian, you know, so I have five domains, okay, including the upper half space. And uh, I would like to, you know, the, the, the property that I would like to emphasize is that the sharper the angle, the larger the spectral radius is. The red curve corresponds to the most acute angle, pi over five. You know, the next one, the, 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 the black one, corresponds to 2 pi over 5. The blue one corresponds to 3 pi over 5. The green one corresponds to 4 pi over 5. And in fact, when the angle, when, when the domain is the upper half space and, and the angle is the, the pi, the, only the point zero survives as being part of the spectrum. Everything else is now. All right? So, so the, Th that's the feature that I would like though you to keep in mind, that the larger the angle, the, the larger the angle, the closer the angle to pi, the closer you're to the smooth case, the, the, the less, you know, like the, the, the better things, uh, you, the, the better off you are in terms of the value of the spectral radius. So um, it's the same picture, same domains, but I have changed the integrability index. From two, I went to three. I don't know whether you noticed this, the scale has been kept the same, the picture shrunk a little bit. So it looks like things are harder at, for p equals two than they are for p equals three. And let me, um, you know, um, do the same type of picture. Now I've done it for 15 angles, you know, all the way going from, from you know, k equals one to 15. Um, um, the most acute, the angle is like pi over 15, that's the larger, the, the larger spectral radius. Uh, the only thing that I would like to emphasize here is that it becomes really hard to tell with the naked eye or whether, whether the point, I for, always forget that I'm not, not supposed to, okay, that the point, car, the, the point one half, whether it's in the spectrum or not. 
you can do you know, rigorous analysis and show that you know, one half is not in the spectrum and that the spectral radius is less than a half in this situation. But as the angle goes to zero you know, um, uh, of, your, of your sector, the analysis becomes more complicated. We're looking here at the behavior of the spectral radius with respect, uh, 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 with respect to the angle in radians. So at zero, you, know, you get that this goes asymptotically to a half. And you know, as the angle goes to pi, this goes to zero. And um, uh, let me show you some other features for some other second order elliptic operator. So we're looking here at the Lame system of elastostatics in two dimensions, um, you know, appearing in, 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 in elasticity. So um, LU is mu Laplacian of U plus lambda plus mu gradient of divergence of U. Mu and lambda are given uh, constants and are assumed to satisfy these conditions to, to, to ensure um, um, ellipticity. So um, uh, what I would like to point out is how the coefficients play also a role you know, in this type of analysis. So bear with me for a second. And, and then you know, there are infinitely many ways to write the operator L in some canonical forms, like a bunch of coefficients, partial i, partial j, with, with summation convention over repeated indices. There are infinitely many ways of choosing these kind of coefficients that do the job for the operator that you're looking at. And what I've done here is to write one of these infinite families. R now is a parameter, which is a complex parameter. No matter what R is, you know, these coefficients, these linear combinations of products of the, 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 the delta Kronecker symbol um, is going to give rise to the operator L. What I would like to keep you, you, you to keep in mind about the harmonic double layer, you know, it had there as its kernel the normal derivative of the fundamental solution. This is going to have a fundamental solution. We're gonna, but in the case of systems, you're going to move from the concept of a normal to that of a conormal. You know, the coefficients of the system play a role. All right. I'm going to choose a very, so, so they're going to be, because there are infinitely many ways of writing the coefficients, there are going to be infinitely many conormals. There are going to be infinitely many double layers to choose. And for the Dirichlet problem, we can just choose our favorite, OK? So I'm going to make one particular choice. You know, I don't, don't worry about what this combination is, but I can make a particular choice that best recovers what was happening in the case of the Laplacian. And I'm going to decorate this by the letter P here. It stands for pseudo stress. So, um, so I'm going to show you how the picture look, looks like. You know, what's really important about this operator is that when lambda plus mu becomes 0, so, so when this term disappears, um, the, du the double layer Kp becomes precisely the one associated with the Laplacian. OK? All right, we're looking at the spectrum in this situation. OK? So it's the spectrum of this pseudo stress double layer on an infinite angle of pi over, of aperture pi over 5 on L2. So the difference is now that instead of one bow type shape curve, we have two of them. All right? And the same type of you know, uh, behavior that I emphasized before with respect to, 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 to the aperture of the angle you know, continues to hold. Now let me show you a slightly different picture. Instead of working with an infinite you know, uh, angle, I'm working with a curvilinear polygon. So I'm taking, uh, uh, you know, I'm taking two angles, pi over 10 and pi, 5 pi over 16, and I join everything in such a way that there are no other singularities at the boundary. So now, what, does, what is the spectrum of the double layer in this situation? Well, I'm going to draw first what I know. You know, so I'm going to take the angle pi over 10 is the most acute. I'm going to draw the curves in red. They correspond to the angle pi over 10. Then I'm going to draw the curves corresponding to 5 pi over 6. There are the curves in blue. But the, the, you know, the dramatic difference between an infinite, the, the infinite sector case and the bounded case is that before, the curves were everything. Now. The spectrum consists of also everything enclosed by these curves. If you're on the curve, that's the, cur the curves are the essential spectrum. There, Fredholm, you know, proper, the Fredholm property fails. If you're not on the curves, but you're inside the curves, then the operator, you know, z identity minus k happens to be Fredholm. 
and its index in, in, its index is given by the you know numbers that you see. So if, if the point z is in this region, I have Fredholm with index one. If z is in this region, I have Fredholm index equal to two. So you have you have a pretty good you know understanding of of um, the functional analytical properties of of, of this operator. Uh, eigenvalues, so, so you're touching on an issue, so I did the uh, swipe under, under the rug. The eigenvalues are always real and between negative a half and a half, but they can be some that spill out. Uh, so, so I'm not, you know, I'm, but I'm, yeah, yes. So, so, so I would like to show you now how the picture looks like for a double layer potential associated with the LAME system, but with a different choice of coefficients. I'm choosing a different choice it's called attraction. You know, it's, like it's known by physicists. They use it for, for the Neumann problem, for, 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 the, Lame uh, <coughs> for the Lame system. It's, it's just, I, I, I kept, you know, two angles, you know, pi over five and nine pi over 10. That's the, how the picture looks like. Please note that the structures of the red and blue curves becomes much more complicated. We have lost the symmetry with respect to the origin that we used to have in the previous picture. The spectral radius conjecture still holds, you know. And then this one, um, I, I want to say that, you know, my picture is uh, the scale um, everything is multiplied by two. So, so the spectral radius is still less than, than, than a half. The program that I used, um, you know, introduced a factor of two. So here, this should be just a half, all right? But I just wanted to show how this, you, how the picture changes should you change the coefficients, okay? All right, so um, uh, the theoretical and, you know, computer-aided results can be proved in this direction in a rigorous way, and I've done some work, you know, back to my PhD thesis for, 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 for the LAME system. Um, and, but since then, you know, we have you, sort of an entire program with, 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 with various people, you know, um, some, some co with a collaborator who is an expert in, in um, a validated numerics, Warwick Tucker, with some of my uh, current and PhD students, you know, um, um, Arthur uh, and uh, Jong Su being here today, um, and um, um, doing this for a variety of problems, uh, including mixed type of problems and including higher order um, uh, operators. I would like to, you know, um, in the remaining time, um, um, which is very short, <laughs> I would like to, uh, um, you know, emphasize, you know, um, you know, self-similarity, you know, you know, fractal is, char is characterized by self-similarity, repeating shape and patterns at all locations and, and scales. A weaker version, quantitative um, invariance of less rigid geometric um, features with respect to the scale and location could be, you know, concepts that we've seen in Kai's uh, 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 talk yesterday, you know, Alfors regularity, the interior and exterior uh, corkscrew condition, the Harnack chain condition, epsilon and delta con connectivity condition, or, or the local John condition. And there are, you know, this leads us to naturally consider, uh, you know, certain natural classes of, of, of dilation invariant domains, you know. So, so that is like what fractal like in, in, in this context. Uh, Lipschitz domain, Alfors regular domains, the so-called non-tangentially accessible domains, epsilon and delta, and uh, ultimately uniformly rectifiable domains. So I'm going to state the main result here, you know, based on, you know, like we have, um, um, you, um, we, together with our collaborators, we have a uh, you know, new series that is out, Geometric Harmonic Analysis, a five volume series in which we systematically develop tools for, 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 for dealing with this problem. So in the first, the first four volumes, we study, you know, the geometry, we study the, you know, the singular integral operators and then and, and, and a bunch of, um, 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 you know, the function, prop, the properties of function spaces in ven very general geometrical structures. And in volume five, we address the radon Carleman problem. And here is, um, you know, I'm going to state the main result. Um, so uh, we're going to deal with Alfors regular domains. And, uh, you know, here we have the characterization. Um, we're, um, so maybe, you know, since I only have a few minutes, I'm not going to go through, 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 the, um, through, through, through the GMT setting. Um, but, um, you know, um, I'm going to work in the class of infinite, infinitesimally flat 
um, you know, Alfors regular domains. Think about this as a generalization of the class of C1 domains. That is, you know, sort of dilation invariant in the sense that I have described here. All right. And um, um, uniformly rectifiable domains that you know Kai has introduced yesterday in the parabolic setting. And uh, I'm going to work with so called distinguished coefficient tensors. So here I give some precise definition of what these, co 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 these distinguished coefficient tensors are. But in terms of the pictures that you've seen there before for Lame, think about the first operator, not the second one, the one that you know ha looked a lot more like the Laplacian. Okay? So I think I have everything that I need to state the main result. So I'm having a uniformly rectifiable domain with compact boundary, a surface measure, and the geometric measure theoretical unit normal vector. I have a homogeneous second order com complex coefficient weekly elliptic system um, for which I have a distinguished coefficient tensor. I'm going to choose such a co distinguished coefficient tensor, and I'm going to construct the double layers, you know, both the operator and the, its adjoint. And I can do this, you know, in a, in a weighted setting with Mach and Haupt weights uh, in the, you know, in the AP class with P between 1 and infinity. And look, you know, at the statement in which we're controlling the essential norm of the operator from LP into LP in terms of the distance between the unit normal and VMO. Okay. For the purpose of this talk, think about this M as simply being one. It's not quite one, but but for 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 the flavor of the talk, you know, you can think of it as being one. So the closer new is to having vanishing mean oscillations, the smaller the essential norm is. Okay. And uh, you have similar estimates for the essential spectral spectral radius of the operators. And um, the operator turns out in the, in the class of infin infinit infinitesimally flat AR domains. So this is the class in which the right hand sides become zero. Then the operators K and K uh, sharp, the, the, the joint, turn out to be compact. And you know that's the last thing that I want to say is that this can be done. You know when when the weight is one, you know you can also do it for a bunch of other function spaces, not just LP. And that everything in this theorem is sharp. You know in the sense that if you violate any of the conditions, you know on the distinguishedness of the coefficient tensor, on the geometry, or on the you, know, you can construct a counterexample uh, to to um, to the to the problem. So, uh, you know, um, anyways, I'm not going to work into that. I'm just going to say that, you know, to summarize, you know, the radon Karleman problem can be studied in very general fractal-like geometries, um, you know, and in a number of different function spaces. It's very important you're dealing with a distinguished coefficient tensor, okay? You know, the other operators do not, do, do, do not follow under this umbrella. Right, so so the, the, the importance of, of of the type of coefficient tensor that you have for, for your for your system. And in that situation, the flatter the boundary, the smaller the operator norm is. Okay? Um, and um, uh, with this I would like to thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much for beautiful talk. Uh, there is a time just for a couple quick questions. Because this was very impressive, just I, I would like to understand um, because you s you started somehow by by the Dirichlet problem. So these estimates for for k, I mean, is this they give then estimates for the Dirichlet problem? I mean, LP estimates is this true or? Uh, do so, I so, misunderstand? so these estimates allow you to invert, allow you to invert, invert and solve okay. the problem. Yeah, and then you solve the directly problem. But yeah. it, it, I mean, just in particular, the last estimates you have, I mean, with the distance, uh, do they also give information on, on the solutions of a directly problem? So, so again, you know, yes, in some ways, but exactly in the way I emphasized before. Because if the norm is small, then the, the inverse is going to be convergent in a Neumann series, and then, then, then you know, the, in, in this way you can have more information about how exactly. And then one, one, one feature of the layer potential method and of these type of estimates, not only that we get estimates for k, but getting, getting estimates on the on the adjoint. The adjoint is going to be relevant for the Neumann problem. You know, so if you have a Neumann problem, 
with this type of coefficients, you know, then, then this is going to be relevant for the solution of the Neumann problem. And then, you know, a similar analysis can be done for mixed, and you know, there are many directions in which, you know, I just focused on some sort of, you know, important, you know, main part. Um, absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, can you, does your, the method work if you replace the Laplacian with uh, a serious differential operator of fractional orders? Uh, no, so, so this is a homo constant coefficient homogeneous elliptic. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Okay. So no, I mean, it's very interesting what happens in that setting, but the methods, you know, are really, you know, uh, uh, no, no, I make no claim uh, about those, yeah. Oh, uh, thank you very much. So I suggest to make five minutes break and then we'll. Oh, but m m yeah, m maybe we keep discussion until uh, lunchtime and make five minutes break right now. Mm.